welcome to Horror Rewind. This is Kelly Florence. And I'm Meg Hostel. And today we're talking about Sweeney Todd. Meg, did you yeah. see this in the theater? Of course I did. Of oh. course I did. That was back when I would go to every Tim Burton movie in the theater. I ha- I, I've been kind of bad and I haven't done that in his last several movies. I know, me, me neither. But I remember, just like a lot of musicals, they purposely don't show that it's a musical in advertising it. And during the opening yeah. number, on opening night, that first song, two guys got up and walked out. They're like, this is a musical? And they got up and walked out. <laughs> you know what? They're lost. Yeah. Fuck them, I think, is the best <laughs> yes. way to say it. I Truly. mean, okay, that's, yeah, they would have liked it if they, like, would have stayed. Like, come on. Oh, <sighs> man. Whatever. Judging so, a musical. A little background just on the story. The character of Sweeney Todd um, was created back in the Victorian fiction and um, the Penny Dreadfuls, if you're um, familiar with those serialized mm-hmm. short stories. And this, he was a villain in, uh, it was during the like 1840s, but they set him back in 1785. And it, that's where um, Stephen Sondheim wrote the musical from, and then, of course, Tim Burton based the movie version on that stage musical, which um, premiered on Broadway in 1979. So something about Sondheim is that his music isn't always necessarily sing-along to it through the general public. And so, you know, some people think it's a little artsy-fartsy. How do you feel about the music? Well, I like music I'm not as um my pulse on music is not very good like I don't consider myself an expert or anything like that and I feel like you have a better idea of like musicals and what's sort of I don't know what sounds good and like I don't know I I feel like I'm like the last person to be able to critique music I enjoyed it in the film but I can see how it has like sort of a um not a typical sound to it, and I right. can see how people, it's like a love-hate thing. I could see how people couldn't really not like it, and I think you said Sondheim's not particularly your favorite. Right. Yeah, I, you know, um, Into Into the Woods is another famous one that he's done, and um, I just rewatched that recently. Johnny Depp is in that, too, and oh, it's yeah. just not, it's just not necessarily, I mean, it's it's a different kind of music, and it's not, catchy in the sense that I, I'm going to go around and, and yeah. sing a song from it. I respect yeah. it. It's, it's beyond my capability, you know, maybe okay. of singing along. But I I really like have this musical, though. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But so, how perfect is this casting of this 2007 oh. movie, Johnny Depp and Helena Bonham Carter? Like, what oh else is there in life? And Tim Burton? I know. I know. It's so sumptuous is like the only word I can think of and it's so oh. um it's that Tim Burton aesthetic but he's able to show like the nasty side of London like this isn't you know when I like dream about you know back in the day I want to like live when you know it's like Jane Austen era and everything's gorgeous and I'm rich but it's like no here's the nasty ass end of of London he, and somehow he shows it in his aesthetic but it's still beautiful because that's what he does. And the casting, obviously, when Johnny Depp and Tim Burton meet, it's like perfection. And oh. Helena Bonham, Bonham Carter, like there's something about Tim Burton. Not only does he have this amazing aesthetic with um, the like art design and everything of his movies, but also the people in his movies. And she's just like made to be in a Tim Burton movie. It's like that's where she belongs. So Dexter came in and watched this movie with me, which um, I wasn't intending, but he came in and he got sucked into it. And when Helena Bottom Carter came on, he was giggling. Like, he loved her so much and her her song. And it just, like, made me so happy because he was sort of understanding the movie on a certain level. Do you know what I mean? Like, right. Because there is that, like, humor delightful level to it even though it's like in the dark streets of london oh i i know i just the the aesthetic like you were saying um i think it blends this musical was meant to be a tim burton movie you know yes yes it's 
it blends everything together. Um, Johnny Depp took voice lessons. I think he did a phenomenal job. I would be asked about that, like what you yeah, thought so, about his voice. I okay. think he's great. I, I mean, uh, not to throw people under the bus because I, I respect anybody who can do a movie musical, but I think he's better than Russell Crowe is in Les Mis. So I'm going to get oh, some okay. Russell Crowe fans at me, adding me now. I think but, that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I, think I don't know. They do might that. be tough. Um, oh. But, but you know, I think I think Johnny Depp is amazing. I am oh thank well, yes. God that he I can like feel okay about him again. You know, he's not problematic anymore. Yeah. Oh. <laughs> yes, thank God because my heart's always with Johnny Depp, and yeah, and and the fact that he stretches himself and and Tim Burton too. Like Tim Burton's not like a musical guy. Um, right. That's not what his background is in. So I love that they both stretch themselves in this movie. So my question. is, um, about the plot, do you feel that this is like a rape revenge um, oh. story? That's what I was curious about. You know, I guess I I hadn't. It's definitely revenge, but I hadn't thought about it in that sense. But yes, and it's like a, from a male perspective, right? Rape revenge, because right. I mean that's ultimately what happens, right? Yeah, and you know, there's so wife. many there's so many levels and layers of gut-wrenching um, emotion because, you know, first of all, he he thinks his, you know, wife is dead and his daughter is being held captive, yet his wife really is still alive. And Helena Bonham Carter, like, she, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Lovett, she knows that that's yeah. his wife and she's lying to him because she wants him for herself. Like, ah, oh. Girl, I get it. There was somebody, there, there was somebody on, um, I don't know, Twitter the other day, and they were like, oh, with Johnny Depp has been going through, like, hell with, obviously, his ex-wife, and, and somebody's like, oh, my gosh, like, he's just been going through so much, and this, this like, random person's like, this could have all been avoided if he just married me in the first place. Yeah, see? And I was like, we all just, like, <laughs> want to marry Johnny Depp, so I understand, Helena, why you oh. did it, and you didn't want him to know, but um, that made me laugh, but... Um, That's hilarious. Yeah, um, I should I should mention this movie is eighty five percent fresh on Rotten Tomatoes, so you know okay. mostly well reviewed. And Johnny Depp yeah. get, did get nominated for Best Actor. Um, he didn't win, oh. but he got an Academy Award nomination for this movie. So oh. I thought that's that was pretty that's awesome. Good news, yeah, yeah, that is good news. Um, he I wrote down that his chair and like um the way he kills people. I know I'm jumping way ahead. But oh no, it, no, it's fine. It makes me think of H H Holmes. Um, yes. If you know who that is, and I, I the, found what, it what is it? So the White Devil. What do they call him? His Devil in the Chicago? White City. Yeah, is yeah, 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 that's yeah. What it was. yeah. Where like I mean, you know, there's still there's still hubbub about whether this is true or not. But H. H. Holmes would like um have like a, a system similar to that. Um, and I've heard of other situations where that might have been a thing too. So I just think it's cool that there's like this sort of fascinating systematic aspect to the way he's killing people right. and it's it's the haves and the have nots like it comes yes. down to that same thing of like um us where it's like um the haves are coming in there and he is sort of finding relief and revenge on taking it out on the haves and then they end up feeding it's like the cycle where they make the meat pies out of them and and feed them to the other haves and I just, I like this sort of poetic justice. And Dexter loved it so much. Oh, that good. He, he wants to have a Sweeney Todd birthday party, but I said, <laughs> I said that's probably not appropriate. As fun oh, as my that God, would be. but you could serve meat pies and everybody could get a shaving. You know. have like a shaving <laughs> a balloon game? Meg, know, we need to plan this. Okay, well, maybe. Well, maybe we'll I'll have our own maybe Sweeney Todd party. Yeah, we'll have our own Sweeney. Maybe. <laughs> Like his family party can be that. Uh, oh, that's maybe that's what I'll do. But yeah, he was like, I want to see his hot birthday party. And after I heard him playing, I think with your kids and some other kids, and I heard him talking about meat pies, and they were like making meat pies and stuff. So oh. he loved it. The only time he closed his eyes was um, when he was actually going to cut somebody's neck. He would close his eyes, but then he wanted to see like the after effects. It was very oh. interesting. Um, so he had, but he still talks about it. It's been a while since we watched it. And so it's fun because 
is one of those things where I didn't force him. I had it on, and he watched it, and he has to find things on his own. Like, if I force him, he won't like it. So um, it was just, it made my, my mom heart expand that he loved it so oh, much. I, I love that. Um, I The thing I love about this, you're talking about, you know, the system and everything and the meat pies. Think about this brilliant long con, this game, that how much mm-hmm. dedication he is putting into this in order to mm-hmm. get revenge on this guy. Like, he doesn't just go up to him in the street. No, it's this elaborate plan. I'll challenge the best barber, and then I'll, um, and then I'll mm-hmm. set up shop. And, and you know, Helena Bonham Carter, she's on board. Like, okay, we're going to make the most of this, and this is going to be a solution for all of us. And I just and think it's, it's so smart. It is so smart. It's like one of those instances where, like, maybe if those two had never met, like, it wouldn't have ended up so tragically. You know, where it's like, it's like that they intersect with each other and it's like she's got her motives and he's got his motives and they're both not necessarily good. But it's fun because Sweeney Todd is like this, is like, he's like a good bad guy and that's fun because he's complicated and you care what happened to him and what happened to his wife. And we have like this really good, you know, starkly um, innocent daughter and then that whole, like, romance and everything. But but Johnny Depp is so freaking complicated and you love him, but then you also are watching him murder people and it's so fun. Yes. Maybe that's why, you know, um, like Dexter and Joe from You, like, they... They, we love to watch them, even though it's wrong. We love it, and it's yes. and it's terrible. <laughs> right. <laughs> I think it comes down to that. Oh, I wrote that. I love so her song, um, and then the artistry of them on the beach. Oh my gosh, that's my favorite. And, that. and their sw- oh. like tiny swimsuits. Oh my god, I want to watch it again right now. I know, and like the look on his face during that whole song, it's so funny. Oh my god, I know it's so funny. I love the humor in it. Um. It's not easy to like make horror humorous in in the right tone for me. Like I feel like I'm right about that, but it's so funny. The um, other really funny song is when they're singing about how the different people would taste, and they're looking oh, at the yeah, window and yeah. just saying like, you know, the bishop and the priest and yes. uh, all those oh, people. That so That's funny so too. funny. Yeah. I wrote Evil Dead slash Sam Raimi level of blood. I love oh. how much blood is in this. Yes. Like. Uh, it's again aesthetically wonderful, but also just like sort of funny in a way, and but still, still um, tragic and, and horror. Yes, I I I agree. You know, I saw uh, a stage adaptation of this about a year ago, and I have to admit, you know, I've been spoiled because I saw the the movie version before I ever saw it on stage, mm-hmm. and I was like they needed to lean harder into the Tim Burton aesthetic because I think if any uh, stage musical could get away with a Tim Burton aesthetic, it's this one, obviously. And it was just yeah. like, it was just very like period. And that's fine. I mean it was a it was a yeah. great production, but I was really like, yeah. give me a little bit redder cheeks, give me a little bit higher hair, give me um yeah. more colors uh and not even like colorful, but just those dark yeah. contrasting colors. Well, for costumes, well, because, oh, And that's the time to be that way. Like, it's not going to work in a Shakespeare piece, but, right. like, in something like this, like, this is when you should do it. Maybe yeah. we should mm-hmm. adapt um, a Shakespeare to be Tim Burton-esque. Ooh. We'll have Maybe to think about that. Maybe we should. <laughs> that, was, that was a bold statement of me. You're right. You can take Shakespeare and put it into any any mm-hmm. uh, sort of aesthetic. Challenge and, yeah. accepted. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> I don't know, like, what the the perfect Johnny Depp character would be in our Tim Burton Shakespeare, but we're going to figure it out. We're going to figure it out, and we're going to cast him, <laughs> Yes, and it's going to be great. <laughs> oh, that would be, yeah, that would be very nice. That would be good. <laughs> um, what, how do you feel about the, um, how the women are portrayed in this musical and then movie? I know some uh, some people don't like, you know, the trope of, like, the innocent girl being trapped somewhere and that it's not interesting and it doesn't give um, that character enough to do. You know, there's similar characters in Les Mis and, and other musicals. Sure. What do you, um, how, probably, did it bother you? I, or? 
it, I don't, it didn't, uh, on its face, it didn't bother me. But, yeah, I mean, I guess I'm certainly not going to, like, count her as, like, one of my favorite characters um, in recent memory or anything. I mean, she is, I suppose, um, a trope. But I appreciate um, Helena Bonham Carter has a lot of agency. And um, I appreciate that his wife, um, that we can see the uh, sort of actions of these men and what they did to his wife. Yeah. Uh, and also we watch how people treat her throughout the musical. And again, now you could argue that she's, she is a trope as well, but I think that it's at least done in the service of, like, this is a man's world and look what they do to these women, both of them. Yes. I mean, both of them are trapped, essentially. Right. Um, and then uh, Helena is in this situation where her only sort of way out is Sweeney Todd. I mean, that's not great. And right. making meat pies out of people because that's how bad it's gotten. So I feel like, yeah, yeah, there's probably tropes in there, but also I think in a more feminist sense. I don't think it's for, like, male gaze or anything. Yeah. So, yeah. So, anyway, I I love this movie, and I think that it held up really well. It was one of those times where I'm like, how old is this movie? It's only a couple of years old, right? Yeah. And it's like, no, it's like almost 13 years old. So um, that was just another one of those, oh, my God, I'm old moments. But um, oh, yes. I don't I, know. I, I'm so glad I watched it again. I think I've only seen it like once, maybe twice before then. So I think that that, and I didn't know the story before I saw the movie. I think that that plot twist, that that woman, this is where my thought was mm-hmm. earlier, that that woman is his wife and then he ends up killing her is mm-hmm. has got to be one of the most tragic love story horror endings of all yeah. time. It's so it's it's like the definition of tragedy. Like, well, oh. yeah, and I and I think it kind of like comes to the head of like he was doing all of this for revenge of her, but like maybe possibly he was so cloaked in revenge, he was kind of like missing the the you know forest for the trees like he sort of like he sort of missed the point of what he was supposed to be doing exactly um, he got caught up so caught up he was yeah. missing literally the person in front of him right who, what could he could have maybe not built a life again with but at least been well with. but to be helping you know yeah and yeah so i think it was sort of like the the downfall of like revenge and like being consumed by it and stuff but oh my gosh it's just like you close your eyes and you can just see it because it's art every frame of that movie is art so it's yes just, it's just gorgeous and i love it and i can gush about it all day oh me too okay there's one little cameo it's not even it's not even considered a cameo because he's not famous enough but anthony stewart head is in the barber scene that's giles from buffy the vampire slayer oh <laughs> and he's just briefly in it and i Rewatched this movie when I found out that he was in it when I was in my Buffy peak, and <laughs> I, it it brought me so much joy. And then of Does course, he gets um, a thing or anything. Yeah, he has like one line. Okay, and, cool. And then Alan Rickman, of course, and then the guy who plays yeah. Peter Pettigrew. They're both from Harry Potter, and so yeah. the Harry Potter fans get that world. And oh God, Alan Rickman is so perfect. Oh my God, what, what a great awful, villain! Horrible person. I know because you have to be. It's like. Tony Todd is, like, complicated and sort of a villain in some ways. So you have to be even more greasy and horrible and, like, vicious than him. And, and they he did an accomplish job. that. <laughs> yeah. Yes. Now, um, this this one, um, it was nominated for, I think, costuming. It didn't win, but it won Best Art Direction, which, of course, well, I mean, this is yeah. this Thank is God. art. Like you said, I think yes. any you pick a frame of this movie yeah. and you put it on the wall and I would buy that painting. Yes. Exactly, exactly. And I, I might even I pay twenty thousand dollars for it. <laughs> Who knows? I know. 20, I, don't, I don't know how much I would pay a lot. <laughs> I know, right? <laughs> we'll we'll collect the fund. Yeah, sounds good. Well, what else do you want to say about Sweeney Todd? Um, I mean I think that people probably get the fact that we love it. And yeah. also support your local theater if it's 
somewhere oh. around. I would love to go see a show and take Dexter. Um, yes. Because I think that would be fun for him. And uh, I'd love to hear sort of if he's putting on a Sweeney Todd show. If she, yes. They should uh, tweet us and and, uh, and we'll retweet know. you and, and we'll yeah, advertise we where it is. Um, so yeah, Campbell and yeah. I saw the um, the stage adaptation, um, but before we did, we watched the movie. And Vienna watched it too. But again, she she just happened to see what it was on, and the kids loved it. But I have to tell you, it breaks my heart a little bit, and I felt guilty. They both cried when he killed his wife Aww. when they realized it was his wife. They both Aww. cried, and I was like, Oh no, I've scarred them for life. No, and it's good. That means they're like they, they are have empathy. And sweet. They have empathy exactly. So yeah. I felt so bad because, of course, you don't want to, you know. No. I like. Well, I will never show them Bambi. But you know, know, yet right? I'll show them. I'll show them Sweeney Todd. <laughs> Same reaction. So that's though, their so. Bambi. They'll yeah. remember that moment. <laughs> yes, I. I oh. there will probably be a psychological study on on my children someday, and what well, what sure, effect I had right. on them. But maybe there's oh, one on well. all of us, right? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <sighs> okay. Well, let's rank this movie on a scale of zero to ten. Zero being you hated it. Ten being you think it's a perfect movie. Um, razor oh, blades, okay. meat pies. What do you think, Charlie? I think meat be? pies. Okay. I think meat pies. And I'm gonna, I'm gonna give it. I'm being hungry. I'm gonna give it ten meat pies because what could I possibly complain about? Oh. Also, ten meat pies for me, and they are filled with the juiciest, meatiest, heartiest <laughs> meats because. I, and I'm a vegetarian, so I'm saying a lot. I know, but you know what? That made me think of, like, Johnny Depp's butt. <laughs> oh. <laughs> like, in a good way. Not, like, yeah, yeah. Not like in a cannibal way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I saw that there's, like, oh, this, no. you know, I get these ads pop up for things that, you know, the Internet thinks that I like. Right. And there's a chef's apron that has Jeffrey Dahmer's face on it and it says, cook more at home or something. <laughs> Oh, I didn't buy it, but you know, like you didn't buy it. Okay. No, I feel like that's a dad joke. You know, that is that is a dad dad joke. Um, apron, although somewhat advanced. I I I would say that's even an advanced that's true. dad joke. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, but uh, yeah, no, not yeah. So ten meat pies, twenty meat pies, actually. That's from yeah, us, that's a lot. So. Yeah, yeah, I do. Well, go go watch this movie, people. If you haven't watched it ever, or if you haven't seen it in a while, it's so good. It's so good. And do like a black back to back like Sleepy Hollow, oh, yes. um, Sweeney Todd and just for, take in the sumptuous Tim Burton Johnny Depp duo. I love it. Okay, until next time, we'll see you in the horror section. Bye.